this channel by subscribing and leaving comments. California, I think 1985, 1986. This is the gun he uses when he packs and looks for these things up in uh, Northern California, Southern Oregon. He has on my head, these are, this is a type of motion sensing devices. That's, I think it's pretty high dollar equipment. But he type, tries to use this type of equipment to, to get to the bottom of this. He's pretty serious, but a lot of what he has claimed is under question. This was done by the late uh, Indiana Big Footer, Tim Curry. This is the explanation for three toe tracks. This here is flipping the whole situation around. For those of you who can't read it, it says, no, don't shoot. It looks too humid. Again, this was done by the late Tim Curry. Okay, this is, how much we're getting ahead of ourselves? Lights. Always <coughs> lights. <coughs> April 24th, three miles north of Truckee, California, nearby Lake Tahoe. Three men claimed they saw a nine, ten foot tall, burnt black Bigfoot approach their picnic site. I went to investigate. I spoke to the deputy sheriff, Joe Mosley, who never went to the sighting location immediately after being notified of the report because of more important things to do. He never filed an official log about the sightings, but this is what he had to say when I interviewed him. Let's see. It looks like I'm jumping back and forth. Here is from August 4th, 1986 from the Menachee Meadows. This man speaking right now is Clayton Paulson. Right, and 
front, they just said they watched it go across. And as soon as it was gone, they had everything back. And they were leaving. And we did one to the sign, so we don't really even know exactly where the sign was at. Well, it's about to keep planning to get in touch with Jerry and to go to the sign. Uh, I'm not. Uh, no reason to doubt these guys. These two individuals saw something. I believe they saw something that scared them. And, uh, and that's uh, what I told the guys to find out. But the information you got out. You tempted to go out on a medical investigation to satisfy your own curiosity. Uh, not really. I had more important things to do here in my own county. This is Dan Perez. About the Truckee sighting, here also was a newspaper article published shortly after the incident. It says here, Bigfoot Country, three loggers report sighting at least three miles north of Truckee. One day after the event, the game warden searched the area for an hour and a half, unable to find physical evidence. The trained dog he had with him also failed to pick up on any tracks or on any sense. Upon my own investigation of the area where the thing allegedly walked, I noticed my boots sinking in the muddy soil rather deep. But where were the Bigfoot tracks of this so-called 9 to 10 foot tall animal that almost assuredly outweighed me? They were nowhere to be found. And Nora Prince, a sheriff dispatcher, had this to say about Sheriff Mosley. I think they set him up again. The local bartender, Jim Shelton, said this. If he's the guy they reported him to, they could well be pulling a trick on him, hinting that Mosley is the cop that nobody likes. Here again is an extraordinary claim that fell by the wayside upon critical examination. Because I haven't personally investigated the alleged sighting and footprint case of Paul Freeman from 1982, I don't think it's fair to make specific comments about anything originating from that area. However, I have been sufficiently brief to the extent that allows me to state three general footnotes. One, if you don't have all the pieces to a jigsaw puzzle, you don't know what the picture is. Two, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And three, what is popular is not always right, and what is right is not always popular. Let's go on. Our next stop is in Hyam Palm, California, with a population of a few hundred, maybe a thousand at most. It's roughly 70 miles south of Bluff Creek and home to what I call incredible Bigfoot reports. 26 years ago, in 1963, this man, slides please. Charlie McCoy, at the time in 1986, he was about 51, living in an area that is characterized by this type of terrain. He made a film of Bigfoot tracks in the High and Pomp area. Before showing the film, which is being presented publicly for the first time, Let's hear what Charlie McCoy has to say in general and specifically about the film. California, September 6th, 1986. Would you state your name and age? Um, Charles McCoy, 51 years old. Okay. Okay, and what is your occupation? Yeah, but the other occasion when I, where I tracked him, it's raining there and it's kind of hot. 
hard to really, you know, see the track for a good the whole amount. Uh, they were all there where people walked on some of them, kind of around some of them. The animal walked along in one location that was eating the maple leaves off of the, during the springtime or eating the young shoots off the maple trees. is far up and probably as high as the ceiling, I'd say eight feet. And uh, the track there is where you could distinctly see the track real good. You could see it with the young dust because the ground was a dirt surface. And it crossed the road approximately three times in about Rockets on that thing.
their 15 non is still on here. Finally, I have a bone to pick with those people who believe that if the thing appears in print, it must be true. Such was the case with the same Oregon Capital Journal, dated June 7, 1971. The article goes on to describe how two teenage girls came across the body of a dead Bigfoot in Easter 1967 near Happy Camp, California. We were five what the girls saw.
My closing, closing thought, stolen from Dr. Marconic, is this. It is not of cardinal importance if such beings exist or not. Because even if they do not exist, they are part of folklore around the world and therefore provide legitimate reason for study and examination. Thank you. all this rare and unique content, please show your support by subscribing and leaving comments.